Are you interested in improving the production of your fishery? Would you like to increase the survival and recruitment rate of your predator species and reduce the need for supplemental stocking of your forage fish? If you answered yes to any of these questions, stick around to learn about enhancing habitat in your spawning areas. Hey guys, Garrett Lee here, fisheries biologist at Pond King. I spend the majority of my time here at Pond King helping property owners improve the quality of their largemouth bass population. Whether that be high catch rates of quality bass or producing trophy class monster bass. Today we're going to talk about how improving habitat in your spawning areas can help you achieve either of these goals and save you money in the long run. Whether your goal is increased catch rates or maximizing the size of the fish you do catch, if there are no additional individuals to replace the ones lost to daily interactions or natural causes, you're just going to be spinning your wheels. There are a host of management techniques to help with this issue, but at the foundation of them all is increasing the recruitment of juvenile fish by improving spawning habitat. Let's start by talking specifically about the spawning beds. Both bass and bluegill build nests or beds to deposit their eggs in. They prefer areas with a firm bottom and materials such as sand or gravel that they can manipulate to construct their beds. They use these materials because the eggs won't sink and the parent can fan the eggs, providing them with fresh, oxygenated water for the developing eggs. Here on this lake, we are fortunate to have low water conditions expose this spawning flat to facilitate its improvement. Since this is a large area exposed and it already has a firm bottom, these factors better suited the creation of spawning beds out of rocks and pea gravel instead of utilizing the honeyhole spawning discs. To accomplish this, we first removed some existing material to level the area the beds would be built. Then we constructed a small retaining wall of sorts using medium sized rocks that were collected from the surrounding area. This will help the pea gravel stay in its intended location. This retaining wall should be about 4-6 to six inches tall to provide adequate depth for the loose materials. Once you are satisfied with your retaining wall, fill the spawning flat with pea gravel to support the eggs once they are laid. We use pea gravel because it best suits both bass and bluegill. The bass can easily maneuver the media to construct their beds, and it's small enough that the bluegill can pick up the individual pieces with their mouth to form their nests. It is important to have plenty of space between these beds as your bass are not colony spawners like bluegill and need space from neighboring beds to feel comfortable. As I stated before, the conditions of this situation best suited the use of these materials. However, if your pond's water level doesn't fluctuate to expose these spawning flats or has a soft, silty bottom, the honey hole spawning discs would be the best fit for your situation. The spawning discs will help to provide a firm bottom for both bass and bluegill to deposit their eggs in, preventing the eggs from suffocation. The large surface area of the disc will help to resist sinking into the pond's floor like gravel will, and they are much easier to install while the water levels are still at full capacity. As the newly hatched fry swim away from the nest, they are immediately looking for cover, so we need to also discuss other habitat that is appropriate for these early life stages. Brush piles, aquatic vegetation, and artificial structures located near the spawning flats will limit the amount of time the fry are exposed to predation and increase the likelihood that they'll make it to the intermediate life stages. The new honey hole nursery is hands down the best artificial structure for these type of areas. Its completely enclosed structure offers the maximum amount of protection from larger predators until these fish have grown and are better able to evade predation. The honey hole shrub is also highly effective in these situations. The refuge cavity created by the main body of the structure along with a complex, dense limb construction, provides excellent cover for both fry and juvenile fish. As with all habitat improvement efforts, diversity in the available habitat not only increases the number of species that can benefit from it, but also provides varying types of cover as individual needs change as your fry and juvenile fish grow. Remember, our habitat is made from high-density polyethylene with UV inhibitors. HDPE is a biologically inert material that won't decay over time, so if you can't add all the necessary habitat at once, it's okay. We can help you come up with a plan that will offer at least some level of protection now and start developing a strategy in enhancing that protection over the years to come. We hope you found this video helpful. If you'd like more information on creating an environment that enhances the recruitment rate of all of your game fish species, drop us a line in the comments below. And as always, subscribe to our channel. Thanks for watching, and we'll see y'all down at the pond.